Do you promise or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Please have a seat. Sir, please state your name. Dean Goodale. And Mr. Goodale, do you know my client, Jeremy Goodale? I do. And how do you know Jeremy? He's my son. Does Jeremy have any siblings? He does. And can you tell the court the names and ages of Jeremy's siblings and where are they living at the present time? Hopefully. Okay. Um, Jacqueline Goodale is um, 28 years old. She's uh, a nurse and she lives here in Fairfield with me. He has a sister also, Camille, one year younger, 27 years old. She's a, um, a chemist living in Washington State. The next sister is um, Sophia. She's also here today. Mr. Gino, we're having a hard time. At least I think we're having a hard time hearing. Is that better? See if you just speak, speak straight into it. Um, he has, also has a daughter, Sophia. Yeah. She's, um, where am I at? 25 years old, I believe. How'd I do? Um, she's um, she's uh, currently living in Guam, and he also has a youngest sister. Is his sister uh, Olivia? She would be 22 years old, and she's currently living with her sister in Washington State. Okay. Prior to Jeremy's arrest in this case, where was Jeremy residing at? He was living here in Fairfield with me. Who was all living at your address on Hempstead Avenue here in Fairfield at the time of Jeremy's arrest? Myself, my daughter Jacqueline, and her daughter, her son Dominic, and Jeremy. What is Jeremy's mother's name? Christine. And you and Christine are no longer married, is that correct? That's correct. During your marriage to Christine, what did you do for income? During most of the time, I was farming full time. Did Christine assist you in the farm operation? It was kind of a, a split operation. There was there was the, my full time job, and then we had some side operations going for the family. She helped with that. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Can you describe your respective roles in operating the farm? My the primary uh, responsibility: I, I ran the, um, the greenhouses and the field operations. And we obviously had some dairy goats, dairy cows, chickens, things like that. And, and she helped the chores with those animals. All of that uh, farm work, that sounds like labor intensive work. Is that true? Farming is a lot of work, yes. <clears throat> when uh, you and Christine uh, first separated, did she take any of your children with her? <clears throat> the kids were mostly teenagers and living six miles out of town on a farm, so their proclivity was to go live in town with their mother. Okay. And uh, after your separation and, and subsequent divorce, did uh, Christine remain in the area? For a while. Okay. Was there a period, of, at, at some point, did Christine no longer live in Iowa? Yeah, she, at some point, um, had a new boyfriend that was very domineering and, and uh, he basically dictated what they would do and she ended up leaving Fairfield. And where did she move to? Colorado. How old was Jeremy when Christine moved to Colorado? I believe seven. No, nine, I believe ten. Okay. The, as I understand things generally, uh, the divorce would have happened around seven and she would have moved uh, to Colorado when Jeremy was around the age of 10, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Based on your observations, what was Jeremy's relationship like with his mother after she moved to Colorado? Well, initially it was, there was some contact, some phone calls and things, but again, it wasn't really a relationship with his, with his mother anymore. She was, her phone conversations were being dominated and commandeered on the other end by her current boyfriend. So her, his relationship with his mother 
kind of non-existent, really. It was with some something else. Okay. After Christine moved to Colorado, did she ever come back to Iowa to visit the kids? There was one time, I, I think she visited when, the one time that Jeremy did visit Colorado, I'm, I'm, if I'm recalling correctly, she may have been to town and picked him up for that trip. Any other in instances of Christine returning to visit with her children that you can recall? No. Did Jeremy ever visit his mother in Colorado? I think you just alluded to that. No, just the one time. Can you tell the court about Jeremy's one time visit with his mother in Colorado? Yeah, with a telling detail. Um, we kind of knew in advance that it could be a, a sketchy experience for Jeremy, so I actually had a, a safe word for him when we called on the phone. And, and the first time I talked to him on the phone, he used that safe word. Okay. So do you recall originally how long it was planned that Jeremy was going to go visit his mother? Approximately one week. And did... Jeremy stay for the duration of what was anticipated? No, he did not. He used his safe word and, and you made arrangements to uh, have Jeremy return to you in Fairfield, is that correct? Yeah, I, I think he, he might have been 10 or 11 years old at the time. They, they told me they were just going to send him on a Greyhound bus and send him back home and I said, no, you're not, and to make sure that he, he flew back. Jeremy was 12 years old when you sold your interest in the farm six miles out of town and you moved into the town of Fairfield, was that correct? That's correct. <clears throat> when you moved into Fairfield, who all made the move with you? Myself, Jeremy, and his sister, Olivia. How long did the household consist of primarily you, Jeremy, and Olivia? Two, two three years. Okay. And then... Uh, as I understand things, a few months before uh, Jeremy's arrest, uh, Jackie and her son Dominic also uh, moved in to, to the family home, is that correct? At that time, Olivia had moved out, and yes, now Jackie and uh, Dominic moved in, yes. Okay. What does Jackie do for a living? She's a nurse. And what is Jackie's typical work schedule like? Chaotic. Was Jeremy involved in the care of Jackie's son, Dominic? Repeat that, please. Was Jeremy involved in the care of Jackie's son, Dominic? Sometimes, I mean, care, I mean, he definitely spent a lot of time with him. Did you observe Jeremy to have a good relationship with his nephew, Dominic? Absolutely. Um, in an earlier question, you responded, Olivia had already moved out. Um, when did Olivia move out of your house? She, after graduation, she, she moved immediately to Iowa City to attend college, and that was 20, 2020, 2019, I'm not sure. Okay. It was 2019, I believe. And after Olivia moved out, it would have just been you and Jeremy alone in the house until a few months before Jeremy's arrest when, <coughs> excuse me, when uh, Jackie and Dominic moved in, is that, that correct? That is correct. In 2020, when Jeremy was 15 years old, the COVID pandemic hit the country. How did COVID impact Jeremy's day-to-day -day routine? You know, he's, he's, he was... You know, his mom kind of abandoned him. Hey, take your time. Interpersonal relationships were so important to him. And we spent two and a half years in a global war against interpersonal interactions. It devastated him. Did COVID play a part in your decision to move Jeremy from the Maharishi School over to the Fairfield High School? Yes, sir. And why is that? Yeah. Sitting at home staring at a computer screen, there's, there's no point in paying extra money for that as far as I'm concerned. Did you feel, uh, well, let 
me strike that. Uh, during 2020, <coughs> during uh, the COVID pandemic, was Jeremy's entire curriculum based on online classes? For a good period of time, yes. And how was Jeremy performing with his schoolwork uh, when everything was online? Not very well. You know, I was a single parent at that time. Um, I had to go to work. I had to provide for the family. And I was to leave a 14-year-old kid at home by himself. He had to be online because that's how they were getting their st st studies. It was another disaster, you can imagine. Um, he was not doing his work. He was, no matter what I seemed to do, since he had access to the internet, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't keep him from playing video games, and that's pretty much what he did all day. And it set up a, a terrible cycle of reprimand and then laying out what I expected from him and trying to support him every way I could and then realizing he wasn't doing what I wished and the relationship just, it was really rough. So you feel that the pandemic not only affected Jeremy generally but also your relationship with your son? Definitely. In 2021, when Jeremy was 16 years old, uh, and I've referenced this a couple of times before, a few months before his arrest, Jackie and Dominic also moved into the house. Is that correct? Yes, sir. In the months leading up to November of 2021, did you notice Jeremy struggling? Yes, sir. And what were your observations about that? I, I knew he was um, smoking a lot of marijuana. I tried to do everything I could to stop him from that, from sitting with him, talking with him, reasoning with him, explaining to him how it's it may, it's not good for his brain development. Um, to you know, trying to go you know, punish him, ground him, or do any any. I, I, I was just at my wit's end. I, you know, I had to go to school every day, and he was again during COVID. He was sitting at home by himself, and there was no supervision. It was. It was an utter disaster. Did you observe uh, Jeremy having any emotional breakdowns during this period of time? Yes, I did. Can you tell the court about that? He, he was very emotional. And, um, he would sometimes, yeah, he'd, just, he'd, he'd literally break down crying and um, You know, it was in a in the end and and screaming some very self-deprecatory things about himself. And these were all in the months leading up to November of 2021. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Mr. Goodale, if someone were to ask you to describe your son, reflecting on his entire life prior to his arrest, how would you describe Jeremy? You know, he was he was troubled, but he was also, you know, highly intelligent. He did he did extremely well at times. So as a parent you're hopeful and you, you kind of focus on the positives and, and hope to work toward and through and that through the difficulties. Um realize that he in in twenty twenty one, the year this horrific crime happened, he was student of the month in April. At Fairfield High School, and also the, ten the tennis MVP that same year. Is it, is it a safe assumption that you thought Jeremy was turning a level, or turning a corner with his level of maturity? I was certainly hoping so. Were you concerned about Jeremy's maturity level? Yes, I, it was very clear to me that he was probably in terms of emotional and intellectual maturity, he was probably at the bottom of the curve for his age group.
What observations did you make that uh, caused you to question Jeremy's maturity level? Specifics, it's, uh, I don't know if I can come up with a specific example. It's just observing his behavior on a day-to-day on -day basis. Did Jeremy have a driver's license or a school permit? No, he did not. And why not? I did certainly wasn't encouraging it. Based on his behavior and the things that I was concerned about, my primary concern for him leading up to this was that he would commit suicide. Given your concerns, you, you didn't feel that uh, Jeremy was mature enough to uh, have a driver's license or put himself in that situation, is that correct? That's correct. Would you be able to describe a fond memory that you shared with Jeremy over the years for the court's consideration? If I can get through it. Take your time. I mean, there were many things. We, you know, we played tennis, we camped, we fished. Um, one of the things that I was most, I was most proud of him for. Um, from an early age, you know, he, he had school um, field trips, and then oftentimes they went to Jefferson County Park. And there was a woman there that was in Fairfield, I don't know who I'm talking about, they went by Toad. Um, and that's not a derogatory term, it's, it's an endearing term in this case. Um, he loved her lectures and the nature walks and the, the bird the bird watching and, and all this. <clears throat> he he developed an interest in ornithology. He was he's Quite fascinated with birds, and, to, and I, of, co of course I encouraged that. I bought him some books, um, gave him you know material to, to learn more, and also he, you know, there's this, you know, Fairfield is an amazing place with some very interesting people. There's a um, a woman in town by the name of Diane Porter, and she's a world renowned. A naturalist, a photographer, and if she doesn't have the technical title of ornithologist, she should. She's a, a bird expert extraordinaire. And she would give um, bird watching tours and um, lect lectures in town as well. And I began to attend some of those with Jeremy. Um, during her lectures, she would, she would often you know, engage the audience in questions and um, you know, people would raise their hands and she'd call and so on. Well, Jerry would raise his hand after almost every question. And usually there'd be several other hands going up. Sometimes there would be no other hands going up. And she so he was called on several, several times over different, different lectures that he attended. She was, she, became, she was so impressed with him that she gifted him a very expensive pair uh, of field glasses. Mr. Goodale, since Jeremy's arrest back in November of 2021, have you maintained contact with him? Yes, sir. Can you tell the court generally about that? Usually once a week. That's pretty much um, when he was at uh, the juvenile center. It was about all we could manage, um, the driving distance and, and everything. And uh, it, it was nice. It was where we tried to hit the weekend so we'd have an hour with him. Um, and then since he's been in Fairfield, the visiting has been a little less um, flexible. Um, not quite every week I, I've seen him. You also maintain phone contact with him as well? Texting a little bit, yeah. Uh, Mr. Goodale, as you know, Jeremy is going to have a lot of rehabilitation ahead of him while he's in the prison system. Will you continue to be a major support system for Jeremy as he works to improve himself? Of course. 
Mr. Goodale, you've expressed to me before previously that you haven't had an opportunity to make any public comment on this horrific event before. Is there anything that you would like to express here today? When this first happened, my first instinct was to reach out to the Graber family. Upon receiving advice from a legal counsel, I was advised not to do that. I'm just so sorry. That's all I can get out. That's fine. We appreciate you being here today, Mr. Goodale. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. I'll have you turn the mic. I'm good. Thank you. Mr. Goodale, you had mentioned that Jeremy Goodale spent nine or ten years in the Maharishi School here in Fairfield. Is that correct? I did not mention that, but I think that's correct. Well, I guess I was kind of deducing that from you saying that he went to public school starting in tenth grade. Would that be accurate? Yes. So kindergarten through ninth grade would have been at the private school? Yes, sir. Okay. And he attended school there consistently through those grades. Is that right? Yes. All right. Were there ever any behavioral issues with Jeremy while he was at the Maharishi High School? I haven't seen the official record or anything, but, you know, he might have had a couple of minor, you know, scuffles or something. I'm not sure what's written up, but maybe not. It didn't seem, you know, he was in a class with a bunch of rowdy boys, and he was one of the rowdy boys. Okay. And was he, well, how would you characterize his academic performance while he was at the Maharishi School? All the way up until the pandemic, he was nearly an A student. Okay. And did Jeremy want to stay at the Maharishi School, or did he want to switch to the public school and go to public high school? I mean, I remember having a conversation with him. I don't think he was averse to it. He certainly wasn't that attached to the Maharishi School. And was he friends with Chayden Miller while he was at the Maharishi School? He'd been friends with Chayden Miller since he could walk. Okay. So they'd been, how would you characterize their relationship since that time? Were they close friends, best friends, part of a friend group? How would you? I'd say part of the friend group. I mean, I never thought of Chayden as being his best friend or anything, but they've just known each other forever. I mean, yeah, Jeremy was more of an athlete, and I didn't view Chayden like that. Okay. And did Jeremy participate in sports from the time he was young? Yes. What kind of sports? He played soccer. He played softball. He played tennis. Okay. Was he always able to be a member of a team? Yes. Were there ever any behavioral issues that you noticed or that were ever reported to you by his coaches? During sports, no. Okay. I mean, sometimes during perhaps when he was in coaching situations, it was a little difficult. But for the most part, he got along with coaches, could participate in sports. Would that be true? During his year playing with Fairfield High School tennis team, he just was shining. He was a great leader for the team. He was an exemplar tennis player and was quite a team player, popular with the team, good with the coach, loved the coach. I think Jeremy at one point in one of the interviews indicated that he had planned on playing possibly collegiately. Is that correct? If he would have worked at it, he definitely had the ability to do that, yes. Okay. 
tell me if I'm wrong about this, the way that I understand your testimony concerning uh, the COVID issue was that was kind of a turning point for him. Would that be true? It hit him pretty hard, yeah. I, I, you know, we were, you know, there's struggles and then there's things that exacerbate struggles and things that alleviate struggles and that was definitely an exacerbating effect, yes. And in November of 21, had Fairfield High School returned to in-person learning? In the window? In November of 21, um, or that semester, had Fairfield returned to in-person learning? Do you know? You know, in, in my mind it hadn't, but I, I believe it had. But, um, I mean, there was still social distancing, you know. This is a, a great term for what he didn't need. Um, there was masking and, and other things still going on, but I believe they were back in school full time. And I, I guess part of the reason that my, my memory is confused is that they weren't in school that day, but I guess that was a teacher thing going okay. on. And at the time that Noe McGraber was killed, had Jeremy been doing well in school for the most part, or how else would you characterize it? Struggling for the most part. Was he failing classes? I believe he was. Had his teachers reached out to you? No. Had you had any communication with his teachers or made any attempt on your part to reach out to them? I had not. Whenever you indicated that Jeremy was the student of the month in April, that was April of 21? Yes, sir. And what would qualify him for student of the month in April? Like I said, he you know he he had the ability to ex excel, and um, I think there was a he had a good month. Okay, so it'd be grades and possibly participation in other extracurricular activities or doing well in those. That I assume that's what would qualify him for that. Is that correct? Yeah, I was a little surprised because I thought he was, you know, I know he's a capable, being a, a straight A student, and um, he wasn't quite there, but he was doing. He was doing a little bit better at that point. And would a teacher have nominated him for that particular recognition, or do you know? Was it the principal? Well, I'm not sure. That's fine. I'm sure there's a teacher involved somewhere, yeah. Um, you indicated that you had a primary concern um, that Jeremy might harm himself, is that right? That's correct. Uh, did you ever reach out to a mental health professional to seek out any assistance for him, or did you take any step along those lines? Thanks for asking that question. Um, I'm, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail on that. Is that okay? That's fine. Um, so he, he'd gone to Optima when he was younger for apparently six months or so. Um, what is Optima? It's local place here in town, they, they have counseling for all kinds of things. Okay. Um, then for, for a while, maybe a year or two, he didn't really do anything, but then I, I, you know, I noticed he was struggling, but he was, more, he was more than struggling with, you know, there was, I, you know, he's always, you know, he was, he had these, uh, had these abandonment issues and I, I, it was, so emotionally he was he was hurting and he was psychologically not doing well but also there were some some physical manifestations he was he's kind of had a chronic cough and, and and couldn't do things with his um athletics like i thought he should be able to like i thought there was something wrong with his, his health so there's a functional medicine clinic in iowa city and um i took him up there and they had a, a, a multifaceted approach, kind of a holistic medicine approach. Um, the doctor up there did a complete exam. They did a, a blood exam. They, they, uh, they looked at they looked at things uh, as many health metrics as possible. Um, then the treatment that they advised. So I, I went ahead and signed them up. And then the way they did it, they paid. A, very healthy sum of money up front, and then he goes for like six months of treatment. Um, primarily after the doctors are visit, and then uh, diet recommendations and uh, supplement recommendations. Um, the treatment was every week I drive him to Iowa City, and 
once a month he would meet he was to meet with a uh, mental health professional uh, psychologist I believe um, so we started going up and primarily what seemed like they were doing was some kind of biofeedback um, and he started getting that treatment up there and um, so he'd go up there and do that once a week. Eventually, he ended up getting a home kit, and, and he wore it at, at home. And it was basically just kind of, they would watch something on a screen and then get biofeedback. And, you know, they had EDGs and, and, and monitors progress. And, and, and based on what they showed me, it looked like there was some, some you know, EEG verified progress he was making on that. The, the other aspects of the treatment up there um, again, were you know visits with the doctor and uh, diet and supplements, and then once a month I, uh, he was to meet with a, a psychologist. The first month visit with the psychologist was it, when it came up. We went up, did the regular EEG, and it was it was just a tag on to the regular treatment that he did every week. Um, the psychologist didn't show up. I thought, you know, that's kind of weird, kind of a profession, a business, a medical health institute doesn't have someone show up for their appointment with a patient. It seemed very bizarre to me. So, you know, obviously I complained to the staff and, and management about that and then still continued with this treatment. So, we, and again, they didn't, they didn't like put it in the next month. They said, well, let's just pick it up at the next scheduled appointment in, in the following month. Um, so he con continued with his, his uh, biofeedback and everything else. The next month came and it's time to meet the psychologist and the psychologist did not show up. Um, this happened three times. And they were billing me, by the way, for this these consults. So obviously um, I did not continue with that and you got into a spat with um, getting money refunded. Um, and that, you know, so that didn't work out. So I, I knew a, a wonderful woman in town that was quite brilliant, um, extremely compassionate and highly intelligent. She was a counselor here in town too. Her name was, name was Julie Bloom. And so I was, I was working to get him, um, an appointment with her and, um, she was traveling in and out, so it was hard to, hard to set something up. I finally had a tentative appointment for him to see her, and it was a couple of weeks out. Before he was able to meet with her, she passed away from cancer. So I'm not one to give up, so I kept pursuing things. Um, I, I also had a friend um, that I knew from college that was a well-known psychiatrist in town, um, and I was reaching out to him to see Jeremy when he lost his license for some malpractice business. I didn't give up then either. I kept looking for um, local people to be able to work with Jeremy and the caliber of, of counselors varies, but primarily was, I just, I just didn't find most of them anyone that I felt would be a good fit for Jeremy. And I, cont I was continuing to look to the, to the day this happened. So the, um, the first series of uh, treatment that you tried to get him, uh, that where the either psychologist or psychiatrist did not show. Psychologist, I'm pretty oh, sure. Sorry, the psychologist, um, what was that time frame? In terms of how old Jeremy was? No, well, Let's take it from November of 2021, so back up from there, how long before Noe McGraver's death would that, uh, would you have attempted that counseling uh, with Jeremy? Three or four years. Okay, so he would have been around the age of 12? Roughly, yeah. 12, 13 maybe, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure. You may have been asked this, that you've continued to have regular contact with uh, 
your son since his arrest, is that correct? Yes, sir. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Cook. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a brief follow-up, Mr. Goodale. Um, you were asked about uh, counseling efforts that you made on behalf of Jeremy and related to that. Uh, those efforts were back when he was around the age 12. I think perhaps to, just to clarify for the court, those efforts at counseling had uh, a lot to do with the abandonment issues that uh, Jeremy was dealing with at the time, correct? Yes, and one more clarification. I mean, the, the, the functional medicine clinic might have been 12, but the f other um, arrangements I was making could, were later, 13, maybe 14 as well. Okay. And ultimately, as you described, uh, and I, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like essentially Jeremy didn't get any counseling due to the difficulties that you described, correct? It's, it's surreal, yeah. You would agree with that? Yes. I don't have questions, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. You can step down. Thank you.